Well, Empowered Energy Solutions was really um, my response to what I saw as a significant problem in the market, which was that a huge fraction of the people that owned buildings were really not well served by the existing model to make buildings sustainable and efficient. Specifically, the problem was that if you owned a very large building, you know, a factory or a or a, a high-rise apartment building, something very substantial. There were firms that would come, they would analyze the building, they would formulate a strategy for moving forward such that the people that owned the building could make it more sustainable in that way, which was the most cost-effective and that would have the best return on their investment. So there were people at the high level of buildings thinking about how to make sustainability and green something which was not only desirable from a, from a standpoint of um, the environment, but also from a fiscal standpoint. But unfortunately, the depth of analysis necessary to do that and the technical challenges that confront you when you start trying to understand what the best possible outcome for a building is are sufficiently steep and there's sufficient you know, challenge involved in doing that that no one was really doing it for buildings of the size that most people would ever deal with. So about 95% of building stock in America just had no useful recourse. If somebody formulated the idea, gosh, our bills are really high, maybe we could save some money and do the right thing for the environment at the same time. And Empowered was a company that I founded to develop the technology and also just the business systems necessary to make it possible for the vast majority of buildings in the United States to actually move through the process of becoming sustainable in that way that would generate the best possible return on investment. And just within the last five years or so, it's become possible to go to most people that own buildings and say, look, if you haven't done something about your environmental impact, specifically about your consumption of utility resources, energy, water, natural gas, you're actually paying more than you would if you were to embrace an optimized project to eliminate your utility consumption and finance it in the right way such that your cost of doing business, your cost of living in the home, you know, would go down right away. So literally, you're paying a premium to be a polluter. And this is really a first. We finally cra crossed the terrible threshold whereby people will benefit from doing the right thing for the environment rather than have to be visionary and pay a premium to do so. I think that the U.S. Green Chamber is a very good idea. I think that it's essential that, you know, the green industry have a lobby. I feel like, you know, the green industry is an industry sort of in search of itself. It's been motivated by you know, ethical characteristics for a long time and it's achieved fairly little success or penetration of the mainstream economy on those metrics. I feel like in order for green to become something which is real and powerful in our economy, we have to embrace the methodology employed by the fossil fuel companies that came before us that were so successful in their manipulation of and virtual outright purchasing of our government. So if we really want to compete, if we really want to see large-scale adoption of the methods and practices that we espouse as being sustainable and responsible, we're going to have to be prepared to engage, you know, in basically a legislative and financial battle with institutions that are starting with an enormous head start.